Hi, this is Jeff Spence, and this is our video lecture over section 10.4, which covers area and circumference. So com circumference is just a type of perimeter. It's a uh, perimeter of a circle. Um, but the big thing that we're going to cover here is uh, the area, uh, finding areas of figures, and learning about um, the area and circumference of a circle. A circle is a very special uh, shape that we that we use a lot in real world, and uh, so we're going to learn how to find the area and circumference of circles and just general areas. So um, it says use the area formulas to compute the areas of plane regions and solve applied problems. Use formulas for a circle's circumference and area. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is just length times width, sometimes called base times height, but most people know length times width. Um, and the area of a triangle, or sorry, triangle, excuse me, the area of a square is just the side times itself because it's just a rectangle, right? So if you take side times side, length times width, you get side squared. So just uh, take any side times itself for a square. Um, these are formulas you can write down in your formula sheet uh, for the exam if you like. All right, so let's say we're going to cover a path. Uh, it's an it's a L-shaped path, and we're going to cover it in bricks, and we need to know the area of the path. So not all sides are labeled either, but we can kind of uh, evaluate the sides using the information given. So for instance, if I, I don't know, if I wanted to find the perimeter of this figure and I needed to know this really long side, then I would know that it would be this 13 and this 3. So this long side would be 16 feet. And then this side would be the 6 plus the 3 feet for nine feet, okay? Um, so it says, uh, on a shape like this, we should divide it into two rectangles. So they have the rectangle here in green and the rectangle there in blue. So they know that this rectangle here, since this side is 13, then this side must be 13. So the area of that rectangle is three times 13, which is 39 feet squared. Um, big thing, when we're having areas, when we're finding areas, guys, we label our units with a square to let us know that we're talking about a two-dimensional size and not a length. So all areas must have the squared unit, okay? And all that means, it doesn't mean anything mathematically, it just means two-dimensional size, okay? An area, like a piece of paper or your tabletop and not a length. It's differentiating from length. Okay, so it doesn't mean you actually square the number 39. It just meant, means that we're talking about a two-dimensional size. So 13 times 3 is 39 feet squared. The area here of this rectangle would be 3 times 9. And uh, that's 27 feet squared. So when you add those up, you get 66 feet squared. That's the area of that path. Okay, the area of a parallelogram is still just base times height, like a rectangle, because any parallelogram can be sliced into a rectangle like that. As you see, they take this little triangle, throw it in on the left side, and you have a rectangle. So um, the, the main thing that you have to know is that the height is the vertical distance from the base, not this angled length, but the height is a vertical distance. And you know it's vertical because it creates a right angle. So a lot of times you'll see in triangles and parallelograms, we'll draw this dotted distance, which represents a height because a height always has to stand vertical from the base. So uh, the area of a rectangle is just space times height or length times width. Um, find the area of the parallelogram. So this is, you know, the height is four centimeters. The base is eight centimeters. So I just do eight times four and get 32 centimeters squared. Remember, this is an area, so we have that label there. Centimeters squared. Uh, the area of a triangle, big time formula that you need to know. Sometimes people write it as base times height divided by two. That's the same thing as one half times base times height. It's really up to you which one you want to write. You can either write B times H uh, divided by two, or you can do one half times base times height. So the height is always, once again, perpendicular to the base, and it goes up to the top of the triangle. So this one, we, uh, uh, we could find the perimeter of this triangle if we add up the 10.5, the 16, and the 14 if we wanted to, but in this case we're actually supposed to find the area. So the base is 16 because we have a perpendicular height right there of 10. So we do 16 times 10 uh, times 1 half or divided by 2. So 16 times 10 is 160 divided by 2, 80 meters squared. 
Okay, remember meters squared for area. A circle is a really important figure that we use. So a circle is a set of points in the plane equally distant from a given point in its center. The radius is the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. And the diameter is the distance all the way across the circle through the center. These are a little bit more formal definitions. So here, here's a circle. Here they're showing us a diameter, which is the distance all the way across to the center. So the radius is just half of a diameter. That's a key thing that you have to know, that a diameter is two radius, or a radius is half of the diameter. So for this problem, we're going to find the circumference and area. We're actually going to do the area first. So the area of a circle, big time formula that you could write down on your formula sheet. Area equals pi times r squared. Pi is an irrational number. It's very important for solving things about circles. Um, and R stands for radius. So, okay. So if the diameter is 40 yards, all the way across is 40 yards, then the radius is half of that, which is 20 yards. So if we take pi times 20 squared uh, and multiply that together, we get 1,256 yards, or 0.6 yards squared. Just to show you that on the calculator, um, where the pi button is. If I wanted to do pi times 20 squared, mo all the calculators have a pi button. You might have to press the second key to get to it, but you, it's, it's right above the exponent key. If you press second and then the exponent key, you get pi. Pi also is also known as like about 3.14, so if you can't find your pi key, um, even though I highly, highly recommend that you use your pi key when you can, uh, you can approximate pi with 3.14. So if we want to do pi times, times, sorry, 20 squared, I got a little squared key, or I can do to the second power, but this is a shortcut for squaring. That's how I get my answer there. Okay, so that's the area. Circumference, another big time formula. C stands for circumference, which is just the distance around this circle. It has a special formula. It's pi times the diameter. So if we do pi times 40, 40 times pi, gives us 125.7 yards. Now remember, circumference is the distance around, so we leave the unit alone, just yard, not yard squared. Areas get the squared on the unit. Distances like perimeter, circumference, uh, stuff like that, lengths get just the unit alone. So it says the distance around the circle is approximately 125.7 yards. It's approximately because we're rounding. Okay, now an application problem. Let me jump back into the slide here. Okay, so it says problem solving using the formula for a circle's area. So which is a better buy, a large pizza with a 16 inch diameter for $15 or a medium pizza with an 8 inch diameter for $7.50? So this is a big time application problem where we're actually going to have to find the areas of the circles given these diameters and then see which one is a better buy. We did this back in chapter 1 where we had, say, a, you know, a 32 ounce uh, box of cereal for this price or a 20 ounce box of cereal for this price. What's the better deal? So you had to take, say, the, the um, dollars and divide it by the size or something like that. And you would know the cost per unit or something like that. So that's what we're eventually going to do. So the first thing we need to do is find the area of these pizzas. All right, to figure out really the size of the pizza. The size of the pizza, a lot, at a lot of pizza places, they show you with diameter, but they also have, they also have uh, the visuals up there. The actual size of the pizza is the area, the amount of space it takes up on a plate, not necessarily the diameter. Diameter is just one way to kind of show you. So for instance, a large pizza with a 16 inch diameter will have a radius of 8 inches because the radius is always half of that. So here's the area of a circle formula. That's uh, So for the first one, the large, it was a 16 inch diameter, but the radius is 8 inches. So if you do pi times 8 inches, 8 inches squared is 64. And if you multiply that by pi, you get 201 inches squared. Okay. The medium pizza, even though the diameter is half of the 16 inch pizza, now remember the radius of an 8 inch pizza diameter would be 4 inches. Okay. Now notice the diameters, this, this diameter is half the diameter of the large pizza, but notice the area is, is about a fourth of the size of this pizza. So uh, they don't correspond directly to the size of the pizza. That's why we have to use the area formula. 
So when you do pi times 4, you get 50 inches squared. So now what we want to do is take the cost and divide by the size to get the, the unit cost. So for each pizza, the price per square inch is found by dividing the pizza the price by the area. Okay. So the, yeah, the better way to do it is always take the cost and divide by the size. So $15 divided by 201 inches squared, 15 divided by 201 is about seven cents per inch square. All right. And the price for the medium is $7.50 divided by the 50 inches squared, 15 cents per inch squared. So the large pizza is the better buy because it costs less. It costs seven cents per inch squared. The medium costs 15 cents per inch squared. So the large pizza is the better buy. And that should generally be true. But you know, you should, it's sometimes when you have various sales, these things can flip. So that's a good application. Uh, just remember that mainly we're going to be doing, you know, uh, um, perimeters, which is circumference and area of a circle. So these two formulas here, area equals pi r squared, really big deal. And circumference equals pi times diameter. The other area formulas that are big are the area of a triangle, the area of a parallelogram, and the area of a rectangle and square. You're going to definitely need all those. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.